glad we're home. Glad we're playing Wyoming, a team that uh, you should not have to say anything other than nine points. So we'll be ready to play. <coughs> Obviously, we wish that we could have had five points to spread around between the two games that we had uh, last week, but we don't. So we're disappointed in the losses, but I'm proud of the effort. And now we have to uh, – I don't think any of you other than uh, – Maybe Ziegler study history enough to know Winston Churchill, I told him. Winston Churchill said, sometimes your best is not enough. You're, do what's required. Do what's required. So that's what I, that's the thought of the day, the thought of the, since, since Saturday, we practiced yesterday, today, leading into the game tomorrow, to do what's required. Don't, don't do your best. Don't tell me I did my best. Do what's required. And that's what we intend to do. We fought awfully, awfully hard. But in, what, in our world, you win or you lose. And unfortunately, we lost two games. So we will be ready for a good Wyoming team that <laughs> spanked us at their place. And I'm excited to uh, see the crowd and the energy that all of us will have tomorrow. Anything? No, I don't think it has. And uh, they're th the, the, it's different in every building, but their chairs for the players are, are a little closer to the court. So I'm straddling the lane line as, as it happened. He didn't see me, I didn't see him. And uh, I know now how football players feel after they've been blindsided and hit. Uh, but I live to play another day, so I'm ready to go. Are we mad? Uh, yeah, I would say we're mad. We're disappointed. Uh, I think every team is mad when they lose, but you got to move on. The game we play is we get the best thing about basketball, the game we play that we're able to play twice a week and not once a week. So we play Saturday. We're playing Tuesday, tomorrow. So we got to take our frustrations out in Wyoming and get this win. Uh, like Jamal said, just, just disappointed, but just can't hang your hat hang your head on for one loss. I mean, you got to keep on pushing and keep on moving on. And that starts tomorrow. Chief, when Coach says, don't do your best, do what's required, if you're doing your best and it's not working, how do you find a way to do what's required beyond that? Um, just staying focused and just keeping to the game plan. I mean, about to say nine out of ten times, if you keep on doing the best, and you keep on doing required, you're gonna be victorious out of out of those times. And uh, we just gotta keep just keep doing what we've been not keep doing what we've been doing, but just at a better better level and a better focus, and everything else will just take care of itself. What was required in Boise State was for Jamal the play before the last play to do what we ask, drive the length of the floor, get a layup. Then we foul them. They missed the second shot or missed one of the two free throws. And uh, he drives it again. The ball gets kicked loose. He gets the ball. If we're going to win, he's got to make a shot. And he made the shot. Uh, you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to do what we did in Vegas. Uh, we're 10 points behind with five and a half to go or six minutes to go. And we found a way to fight back. He scored our last 10 points. Uh, at the end, the ball squirted loose, and Jamal tackled the ball and got us a jump ball. So we got another, now we got a chance to, to win. Now, now we got to make a play. Now you've got to get the ball in the basket to go home, to go home victorious. So that's, that's my take on it. And you, you look at every game. I, I told our players, I watched uh, Wichita State, Illinois State last night. Illinois State led the whole game. Five to four, biggest lead Wichita had. 14-point uh, lead. They got an unfortunate flagrant one call. Uh, and now they're two points behind. Flare screens step out, guarded, makes a three to win the game. So you, you have to find ways to make plays that will allow you to win. Basically, the conference seems like it's tougher. Every, every team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in these games that you've narrowly lost. Does that ever bring you games in the past, do you 
Um, yes, I have to say yes. I mean, just like Coach Fish said, like pl a play here and a play there can really determine the outcome of the game. It's just win or losing is like this much. So if we get a play here, get a play there. I mean, it's probably the other way around. We're with the with the wins and then with the losses, but. If our effort just keeps on staying the way it's been staying, I don't see us losing any more close games like that. Coach, I think I read that you said you thought this team was better overall than last year's team. Is the result out there that accurate? That's accurate, yes. What, what makes you feel like that? I'm with them every day. I've watched our games from last year. I've watched our games from this year. We're a significantly better defensive team. And stats bear that out. Uh, I've well documented, 10 out of 13 down to the nub a year ago, we won. He made a basket against Vegas here at the end of the game. And X made a basket against uh, USC last play of the game to win. And I could cite the other eight. And this year we, were, we haven't had, when, when it's come down, and you know, you, we are as recent as our nose of the last two, we haven't, and they have. We're two points ahead, and all of a sudden, uh, Green hits a three. They made, they did what's required to win the game. And you know, sometimes you say, "Well, it, it's it's not luck. It's 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 players making plays." To some degree, it is. To some degree, it is. So, we've got good players, and now we got to find ways to uh, to make plays. But as I watch and evaluate. I do think we have a better team than we had last year. That's obviously not reflected in uh, most recent success or lack of, but I still believe that. Do you think that other teams are better at making plays than they were a year ago? They have better players, just better competition? Our league is better from top to bottom. I, I do believe that. There's no question about that. Uh, the team that beat Colorado State. They're significantly better. Four starters back, and they bring Iverson in now as that, that fifth guy. They're all seniors. They're, they're significantly better. And I know they've won their share of close games. You have to do that if you want to win a championship. You have to do that. Uh, and then you have to have a little bounce here and a bounce there. And, you know... We need to keep putting ourselves in a position to win and then find a way to get that loose ball. Find a way when you have that shot to make it, when you have that free throw to make it. Coach, a little off topic, uh, Kawhi and Spurs, they went down Thursday. Have you been paying attention to what he's been doing this year? It, me? Yes. I have. What have you I follow with great pride. Uh, he had a career high the other night, 26 points, when all the others, uh, two or three other guys were hurt. They love him, and we do too. And we're, we're very proud of what he's doing. And I know he's talked to these guys and uh, on and off, and he follows us the way we follow him. How important was him coming in and staying here? Because he kind of blew up in the CIF finals and the playoffs and a lot of quote-unquote bigger schools are coming after him. He stayed here, he was loyal. How, how big was that going forward? Uh, we had been good before he came. We had won 25 games a couple years before he came. Uh, I think what happened when Kawhi came here was what you hope will happen when you recruit a young guy and you tell his mom, we're going to do everything we can to help prepare him for life and where he wants to go. And we feel he can help us. We feel we can help him. And I would say he could not have picked a better spot in the world to go to than here to help prepare him to get to where he is right now. So it was a, definitely a win for us. It was a great win for Kawhi, too. Jamal, what, um, you know, as you watch the film, what are teams doing to you now? I mean, the, the last few games have seen that the, the defensive tension has ramped up even more. And what do you need to, to do to sort of adjust to that? Uh, when you get to conference, they know your play. So. We're going to conference, they're ignoring our plays and they're beating me to the spot and forcing me to go the other direction. But um, 
I worked on a lot of stuff since after the Vegas game. I've been putting a lot of time in the gym, working on a lot of stuff. So I'm going to see how I adjust out playing against Wyoming. I'm going to see how they guard this. In terms of the fouls, I mean, it seemed like the last year, particularly in the first part of the season, you were getting a lot more fouls called. And the referees just stopped calling those? I, I, I don't know what go, goes on with the refs. I just got to worry about trying to play my best for my teammates and just work on winning. Um, I had a talk with Chase and X and told them, should I switch up my game? And they both told me, just keep playing my game. I'm going to score, do what I have to do. And I'm going to keep playing my game. I can't worry about having a ref make a call. Uh, a lot of times I'm getting fouls. Obvious I'm getting fouled, but the ref's not calling it. So I can't worry about that. I got to worry about just playing and worry about winning. Uh, it sticks with me forever. It sticks with me forever. Um, I'm not the type of person that gets over stuff like that. Uh, it sticks with me forever. Uh, actually, that night I couldn't sleep tired until like four o'clock that morning. So it sticks with me forever. But uh, like I have to, I have to move on and worry about the next play and get ready for Wyoming. Because if I'm worrying about that same play where I got called for travel and me not being able to step up for my team at the end of the day, then it could hurt me. But it sticks with me forever. But I'm going to move on still. So if it sticks with you forever, how much did that Wyoming loss stick with you? And does, reven I mean, does revenge come into a factor? Yes, revenge definitely comes into a factor. Coach, does it seem like towards the end of the game, like it's being forced? I mean, you're kind of saying everybody needs to do, do what it takes, but does it seem like it's being forced? <coughs> trying to do too much at the end? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, some of the things that we're doing now that aren't turning into baskets, if you go back and look at games that we won down the stretch, similar type things that we tried to do, options, opportunities, that we got in the basket, that we haven't gotten in the basket enough. James' uh, arm is still in the sling, did not work out today. Uh, unless something miraculous happens, he probably won't play tomorrow, but he's doing therapy and he's better, he can move it better, he can do more with it than he could yesterday when we met. So strange things happen and we're just gonna have to, we've listed him day to day, but he did, did not do anything with us today in practice. He got hurt the very first defensive possession that we had and played for another minute and a half or so before he just realized that, that he did do something that inhibited him from really moving his arm. Uh, he was running and turned and ran right into uh, Bennett. Uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, when we first got here, uh, when we were shooting in the arc and early in the gym, he was knocking down shots. Um, I just want to probably say in the when we started playing in the game, when you get in the game mode, uh, it probably was shooting different. But I always thought Kawhi can shoot. But when he got to San Antonio, he really worked on it and worked on it. I mean, he always worked on his jump shot. And now he's just getting opportunity to show and really people are really becoming, he's becoming a shooter. I agree too. Like Chase said, uh, he always been a good shooter, but game shooting is a little different. But now he always put the time and working on it. Now he has nothing to do but just work on his game. It always developed him even more. And now he's one of the best shooters I would say in the league. And I would say he's probably one of the top shooters on the Spurs right now besides yeah, the dudes in the three point contest, right? He just so had yeah. a game winner. Yeah, he had the game winner three against the Cavs, right? So yeah, yeah. He's, he's one of the best shooters I would say right now for the Spurs. And probably, I want to say, top 10 shooters in the league right now. Chase, I want to ask you about uh, sort of getting even with Wyoming. Does that, does that factor in your mind at all? Of course. I mean, every time every time you lose to a team, when you know you're going to play them again, uh, that is always in the back of your mind is that we have to come out and with a, a type of urgency that it's not going to happen again. Because I remember last year when we lost to Colorado State, 
on that plane ride, that whole plane ride, we were just talking about we couldn't wait, just couldn't wait to play them again here. And we played them here, we took care of business. So every time we play a team that we lose to, it's, it's always a extra, extra, extra amount of urgency. <laughs> Uh, we got to convert on the offense end. We got to score in the half court because we're not going to get too much early offense and transition. So we're going to have to make sure we score on the half court. And we got to make sure we limit him to one shot on defense end. I mean, yeah, you hear it. Uh, I mean, it's, everybody's talking about it. You hear, it, but uh, the one, like the great, the great ones, they hear, it, but they don't let them bother them. And I think that's on our team. We really have people that we just let, we listen, to, we hear, but we don't really take it to heart. I mean, we know all all the people that we got is our teammates and our coaches. To the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's us in that locker room. It's us out there practicing every day on the floor. With the coaches, I mean, so we just know as long as we got each other's back, everything else is going to take care of itself. So Beth said that um, when you play at Wyoming, you, you have the game plan differently because the altitude. Then from here, will they see a different style, different uh, Aztecs game than they saw the way you <coughs> when you go to Wyoming to go to Wyoming? Altitude and travel and Playing in freezing cold weather and playing in the double A had nothing to do with how we played. We had a lot to do with how we played up there, starting with me. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't play. We got taken to the woodshed. I think the only time this year that that's happened. Uh, so from that standpoint, uh, absolutely not. Now, obviously, it's, it, it's altitude and all of that. That didn't factor in at all into our trip up there for this particular game. Uh, and you talked about Beth Burns and her ladies team. Uh, I think all of us, we want to congratulate her on the phenomenal job she and they are doing with her team. They're running through the league uh, the way we wanted to run through the league. And they're doing it. So we're very proud of what they're doing. We cheer for them like they cheer for us. And uh, Beth uh, gave me a long pep talk over the phone that I that she left me a message on last night after they won. And uh, we're, we're proud of what they're doing. And our goal is to come in and get a win tomorrow and them to get a win on Wednesday. He's doing well. He, you know, he's, uh, he's playing in some – some ways like a, a young first year player. And usually you get more consistent the longer you play. Uh, but we, as I said before, we really like Winston. Uh, he's going to be a very good player. I would say probably the two best games he's had for us this year have been against Vegas. Played well over there, played very well here. Uh, so we just need to keep uh, helping him grow and get better and he needs to continue to help himself. Well, we're going to go back to the lineup that we had started earlier. Uh, Xavier will start, but that will move every man one notch higher. And uh, he played 23 <coughs> minutes in the last game. He'll he'll get his minutes, but it probably mean you'll see different guys. Uh, you get more of a DP siding. Dwayne Poli and some of the other guys that haven't gotten the time will probably get an opportunity, and maybe a longer, maybe a second opportunity. I'm sorry. Ah, it's still it's still there a little bit, but he's fighting through it and playing, and I, I think his conditioning is starting to get a little bit better. And uh, we need him out there. We need him playing. We need him playing playing effectively if we want to be as good as we can. And we'll we'll have him tomorrow. <laughs>